How's it going, guys? Um, I recently came across this need to be able to reduce the polycon count on a whole bunch of different models. Uh, so, I remember that Houdini's got this new TOPS context and PDG and stuff. Um, so, I decided to see if I could uh, use Houdini to automate uh, the whole thing. Um, and honestly, it's not very hard, but it did take me uh, a little bit of time to figure out uh, the right way to connect things up to get it working, so I thought I'd make a, a quick little video to uh, show how it's done. Uh, so, over in Houdini here, um, I've got I've got a little model, right? And it's fairly high-res sort of stuff. And basically, I need to end up getting it down to low-res. This is a bit extreme, but uh, I just want to be able to show, show it off, right? Uh, but, and the nice thing is, because it's uh, Houdini, you can do whatever process you want. Like, if you wanted to, you know, Voronoi shatter this guy and... Uh, Explode them, then great, whatever. Um, but the thing is, like, if you need to do this to a whole bunch of files, you don't want to be coming in here and changing the geometry file and then waiting for it to cook and then, you know, saving and doing that whole thing. So, yeah, anyway, let's get into it. So, I've got a new uh, window here. And right off the bat, I'm just going to save it. And I've got a little spot picked out over here and I'm just gonna call this tops sandbox for the moment okay so the ba way we're basically going to do this is we're going to make a geometry context that takes in the file does the stuff to it and then we're going to convert that to a HDA uh, Houdini digital asset so let's drop down a geo context and the first thing will be bringing in a file so I'm going to add a file, and then just so I have something to work on initially, uh, I'm going to go select uh, some of my files, or one of my files to work on. So uh, in this folder, uh, I've got a folder called uh, Models. Uh, and in it, I've got just a couple, uh, couple models here just so we can uh, have something to work with. So... You can see we got this 3 model of a guy. We got this um, scan of Lincoln's head and his death mask, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then this uh, little owl thing. All right, but the thing is, we got a folder here, and at the end of this, we want to be able to just churn through all of them. So um, here we go. We've got we've got a model of this guy, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is. Just, I'm going to reverse it because the normals look backwards. And then I'm going to poly reduce. And this is really the main thing I wanted. But just for the fun of it, I'm going to set the output polygon count to, uh, say, 500. Um, change the display flag. And the nice thing is, once this thing cooks the first time, you can actually just kind of slide around and see what looks good. So we go with 500, and the first thing I notice is there's some little, little holes in there. So, because this is Houdini and we've got some tools to work with, I'm going to do a little polyfill. Uh, I'm going to fill it with triangles, and there, there we've got our holes filled in, right? So that's cool. We've got our guy. And just, just to keep things exciting, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to break this guy up. So, well, let's say... I want to make that flat first, so let's add a normal, set the cusping all the way down, so that way it's all nice and flat, right? Uh, let's say I'm going to scatter, I don't know, 100 points, something like that on there, and we're going to use that to do a Voronoi fracture. So bring in the original geometry, the scatter geometry, and there we go, we fractured the guy, and then just to make him look a little cooler, we're going to do an exploded view. Right, so that's kind of fun. I'm just gonna bring that down to uh, something like that. Cool. So that's our that's our little action that we want to happen, right? Like for every file, I just want to do this set of actions. So we've got that going. I'm gonna hit save, and now I'm going to uh, come out to my geo context, and I'm just gonna name it. Uh, do things to stuff. 
Yeah. So, uh, so this is just one geo context, right? So it only does one thing. But if we right click it, we can say create digital asset. And this is where things start getting a little bit more fun. Um, I'm going to save this just into that same folder with the rest of my stuff. Uh, so I'm going to pick that path and just accept the default thing. And I hit accept. So this is going to make a, a file that will basically house all the actions that we want to do. And this thing pops up asking about uh, layout and crap. And I just say, destroy all spare parameters. Uh, this will take a second. And then it pops up this thing, which is kind of like setting some parameters and whatnot. Uh, the first thing I'd normally do with HDAs is come over to the parameters tab and select all these things and just hide them, make them invisible. Uh, cool, so that means when we click on our little node here, there's there's nothing here to work with, but we wanna add some stuff. So specifically, I wanna add this path here because I wanna be able to set that path from outside the uh, of the thing, right? So if you right click on a field, uh, you can say export parameter to type properties, uh, or you can hold alt and middle mouse button, which is nice because then that shoves this over here, right? So these are the parameters. And if we come up to looking at this thing, once we apply, do, 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 yep. All right, now you can see we've got a spot for us to like actually put our, uh, um, parameter in to tell it what file to work on. So we can just accept that. And at this point, if we were to go and swap out uh, for, say, the owl, you can see it does the same thing to the owl. All right. But again, we're at, we're at, still have the same problem where I don't want to be uh, changing this and saving that. So here's where we get into the tops stuff. So I'm going to add a top network. And this is the this is the fun stuff. So if I add a file pattern, uh, and then over here in the pattern, this is asking where to go look for things, or where it should look for all the folders or all the files inside a folder. So I've got everything in the models folder, and I'm gonna say find me everything. This is a wildcard to the asterisk. Uh, so everything in this folder. Um, so if we bake this now. Uh, and say dirty and cook this node, you'll see that I've got three three little dots, and those are each of the work items, right? And if I double click them, you can see that it came up with LeBron STL, Lincoln Head STL, and should be the Al STL, right? So this is just the same stuff that happens to be in this folder. Cool. So now we just have to add an HDA processor, which means uh, we're going to basically feed all of these work items into the HDA that we just made. So we have to tell it where that file is. So let's go select that. And that's Matt's do things to stuff HDA. All right. Uh, that's cool. And after we do this, we have to say update HDA parameters, which then when we go over to the HDA parameters tab, we'll have all the parameters from our HDA. Um, so the only one we set up for this was this geometry file. And here's the trick. We need to get the, uh, the uh, information from these guys, these work items, into the HDA processor. And this is the part I had a little bit, a little bit of trouble figuring out what the right way to do this is. So I'm going to show you the way I figured out how to do it. I'm not sure if there isn't a better way. But for the geometry file, we're going to put a, a little expression in here. So using a backtick, that means we're going to do an expression. And I'm going to say um, hip. Or wait, no, 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 sorry. I'm looking at my uh, the wrong notes here, sorry. Let me look at the right notes. There we go. Okay, so we want to pass in uh, the backtick expression and then the at symbol directory slash backtick file name. And the way I found these is looking at the work items, if you double click it, it'll show you that here are the attributes. So we've got a directory, uh, extension, and file name. And the file name has the extension on it. So if we combine directory plus a slash, 
with uh, the file name, we should get what we need. So that's what this is. This is an expression that pulls out the directory attribute, adds a slash, and then adds the file name. Cool. So uh, the last thing I think we got to do with this thing is just tell it where to save the stuff out at. So if we scroll down to the output file name, uh, it has all of this by default. And I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to say output to my same folder where my hip is, which is just the whole Houdini file. Um, and then I'm going to say put it in an output folder. And then whatever the PDG name is. And I'm going to output STLs. Cool. So I think we're good. I'm going to save save the, uh, the file. And now if I right click and... Uh, dirty and cook this node, it's going to start processing and it's spinning. It takes a second for it to do its thing. But if I open up a folder and go look at that, that spot, we've got an output folder now and we've got our three files. You can see it's done cooking because it's got the little checkbox. And if we open this up, you can see we got our, uh, we got our LeBron there. We got our Lincoln head and our owl should be here. Yep. And that's that. So it just means that we can basically, what, it, however many files we had, we can get it set up and have it uh, just chew through them. And in fact, uh, the, this whole tops thing is great. If you need to do a lot of files and you have a couple machines uh, with Houdini, you can actually set this thing up kind of like a farm and have them all work on them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. We made an HDA that just contains the actions that we want it to do. Then we made a top net that just looks at a folder and then executes the H H <laughs> HDA on all of them. Uh, and then just saves them out to a folder, which is pretty cool. Uh, yep. Well, that's all I got. Talk to you guys later.